Hi everyone, welcome back to electrosurgery and energy demonstration and uh, discussion. Today we are going to be discussing about ultrasonic energy. In the last episode we discussed about uh, bipolar energy, we went through the different uh, aspects about the uses of bipolar energy, the advantages of bipolar energy, the limitations of bipolar energy, and finally, the tips and tricks on how to use it well. So we move on to another energy source. Now this is not electricity. So this is ultrasonic energy. So ultrasonic energy is going to have electricity only till the hand pace. From here, the oscillations and vibrations are the way it works. So this works on friction rather than on electricity. So there is no electricity at this end. Uh, this has piezoelectric uh, crystals which actually help with oscillations on this end. So we have the handpiece. This is a harmonic scalpel. We have an eye scalpel. We have different types of scalpels that are used for uh, ultrasonic. We have sonic beat. This has sonic beat. We have thunder beat, which is a combination of uh, the advanced bipolar and uh, ultrasonic device. And we have sony scission from Covidian, which is ultra ultrasonic. So all these are options of ultrasonic, but they all work on the same principles about friction and vibration. So in this instrument, we have two arms and if you can see closely we have one that is mobile and one that is straight so when i activate this instrument you can't see anything happening so you can't see anything happening but actually this is an active blade at the moment so the question that many people have is, how does this friction happen? This friction happens not like this. It happens this way. So which is the active blade? The straight one, the thin one, not the one with the Teflon white structure. So this straight one is the one moving up and down and it's oscillating in that way. And it's oscillating at 55,500 times a second. Okay, now there are different settings here. You can see setting number three, setting number five, setting number two, setting number one. So this decides on how far it moves. So it moves between 30 and 60 microns. When it is setting five, it moves 60 microns. When it is setting one to two, it moves less, but it's moving at a similar uh, pace of around 55,500 oscillations per second. So it is vibration or friction energy, not electrical energy. And this is what is happening as we are moving. So you can see when I activate it, this is the maximum. This is the minimum. Maximum. So you can see nothing happening. But see what happens when I put this in water. So that is moving, it's oscillating, and even this is oscillating. This is oscillating less, this is oscillating further. So that's what happens. Now, how does this energy help us in dissecting or in, in buzzing and coagulating vessels? So when you activate this, so you can see this one moves in, and it can, when I activate it, it actually goes in. So you see, it's, it's moving and it can actually cut through. Now, when I have put it in and now I activate it and close this, it actually cuts the tissue. So this is how you would use this energy to dissect. So you can make a cut and dissect it off. For example, that way. So you have cut it off from here. Now, when you use the minimum, you can see it actually now is doing it, but slowly. 
and when you do that you will realize that it actually is burning if you can look here you will actually see this turning black see that so that is buzzing as you are continuing now having said that uh, this is one of the best instruments for dissection because it creates a cavitational effect as it's doing this with the vibration and therefore it creates dissection planes to open up so it's a very good uh, very good instrument for dissection now I've said about the minimum and the maximum now apart from just the minimum and maximum saying that this is used for co coagulation and cutting actually speaking if I use the same you see that the, the, the effect here so I'm using the same maximum and see I'm causing a burn and when I do this and I press it I've cut it without a burn see the difference so the difference here is I've used the same maximum setting but in this one I'm not putting too much pressure I'm putting less pressure and I'm buzzing the the tissue around before I cut it through by compressing it completely whereas in this one I am directly cutting it through and I just cut it and close this and you can see it cuts through without burning so this is for cutting directly this is for coagulation and cutting so actually speaking what is more important is not the power level what is more important is the compression level if I compress less and still use the maximum I can still get a coagulation effect if I compress more and I cut it through it will cut through like a blade and it will have less coagulation effect so that is more important so when you have a vessel number one if you want to work very well with ultrasonic for a vessel what I, what we would advise is first dissect it and actually skeletonize the vessel as much as you can to leave only the vessel once you only have the vessel in your hand the next thing is we would tell you to use less pressure as you're trying to buzz the vessel in one spot then below then above then below the vessel and once you have done that go in the middle and cut it through so you have burnt on this side you have burnt on that side and you have cut through to get a better effect sometimes you burn it this way and then you turn it round and you go the other side of the vessel and burn it that way come back here burn it this way so you actually can burn this surface as well as the opposite surface before you cut it through so these are tips and tricks on how to use the ultrasonic well if you want to buzz a vessel don't compress it completely use less compression as you buzz then when you want to cut is when you use the full compression last is this has a very low thermal spread so it's a very good instrument to use in very fine locations dissecting of the ureter, ureterolysis. It's very good in endometriosis dissection where you want to go to the pararectal space and close to the nerves and separate the bowel off and dissect off the bowel a nodule. So basically speaking, it's a very good tool for dissecting in endometriosis and in complex uh, frozen pelvises. Uh, the only problem with this instrument is to understand that it has a less lateral thermal spread but by the time you've finished cutting this through you see when you have cut it through and now it has cut through if I touch this instrument this tip it will be very hot so it remains very hot for quite some time and it can go up to a temperature of 200 plus degrees centigrade so if you have cut through and then by mistake the next thing you know is you're touching the bowel next to it as you're going to dissect here and go back here this instrument may not need to be activated when on the bowel but it will buzz and it will burn the bowel so the the key about this is once you have activated it when you when you stop it and you've cut through you you always have it in view and always 
in, in plain air, not to touch any surrounding structures. If you're not careful, if you're not sure about that, pull it back into your trocar as you're doing whatever next, then go back in later. So activate it, work, pull it back into the trocar, go back in again, so that you do not have a hot tip touching any structure that you did not want to burn. The next thing is, once you have cut the tissue, stop activation immediately. Do not continue. So what, I, what we mean by that is, let's say this, you can see here, now it has cut through. So do not continue now. When you continue now, it is going to be burned. It is going to, you can see how hot it has got. It's going to continue burning along this, I mean, against this Teflon uh, structure. So when it continuously rubs against the Teflon structure is when it gets extremely hot. So try not to buzz. I mean, stop, stop activating immediately your cut through the tissue. Do not continue activating it on the Teflon. So this is about um, ultrasonic. Now, if I show you, see? So when I activate this, can I, is anything happening to me? No, look. I'm moving it, I'm active here, nothing is happening, this is no electricity. But now, if I use this and I put pressure on it, then this will cut me. If I hold this like this and I put pressure on it and I cut it, it will cut me immediately. So the important thing is to understand that this blade is vibrating and you can see I can touch it, but it's not burning me because I'm not putting pressure on my finger. If I put pressure, a bit pressure like this, it will cut through, got it? So the, the, the issue about ultrasonic is it works on frictional energy and when you have friction and you press it against the active blade, it will cut through, okay? The new ultrasonic, now this is a new ultrasonic with an advanced hemostasis uh, mode. You can see this green button here. And this advanced hemostasis button actually is where this instrument now takes control of how to effectively cut that blood vessel. So what happens is when you activate it with this, with this button, it will cook slowly first, whether you have pressed it completely or not, it will cook slowly first. And when it senses that it has, it has actually uh, cooked the vessel well enough, then it moves faster and cuts through. So it will not cut through immediately. Whereas if you use the max and you just press completely, it will cut through irrespective of whether the tissue is cooked well or not. So the issue about harmonic is you have to be, or ultrasonic is you have to be very aware about what you want to do. The next thing is about ultrasonic and one of its tips is if you have a bleeding vessel and you can see a spurter, then it's possible to go in with an ultrasonic device and just hold the tip of the vessel, activate it, and it will stop bleeding. But if it is a, a generalized ooze, this has very limited use in trying to buzz the whole surface there. So if you cannot see the vessel well, you're better off with a bipolar to go and buzz the vessel than an ultrasonic. Ultrasonic is good for an actual vessel. So in summary, Ultrasonic is an excellent tool for dissection. It is a very good tool that can be used for both uh, coagulation and cutting. It is very precise. It has very little lateral thermal spread. It actually gives you a good uh, secure uh, control of quite a bit of sized vessels, uh, including the uterine that can be controlled only by an ultrasonic. And it has the cavitation or bubble effect which helps with the dissection, but you have to use it correctly to get the right effect. So this is my tool of choice for deep infiltrative endometriosis and frozen pelvises. And whenever I have to go into the retroperitoneum, going over the ureters and doing ureterolysis or releasing uh, adhesions around the ureter, it is an excellent tool for bowel uh, resection, I mean, I mean dissections and clearing off the bowel for resection possibly, or a nodulectomy. So that is in simple words about an, uh, ultrasonic energy. With this, I think we come to the end of the 
uh, electrosurgery and energy module. Uh, hopefully, uh, it was uh, valuable and important as an insight into the principles of electrosurgery. And uh, we will hopefully catch up again for another topic in the near future. Thank you very much.